Hello everyone, Crydex here. Welcome back to our space exploration playthrough. In our last episode, we got our beryllium all figured out, and I've gone ahead and come back up to our space station, and we've changed a few recipes around. First of all, first of all our thermofluid recipe is a lot cheaper now because we're using cryonite rods instead of a whole lot of things with a lot more heavy oil. So this will be a cheaper recipe now. And then it looks like we've run out of cosmic water because we've run out of water. So the next thing I need to do is bring water ice up here and start using that. The problem is you need a biochemical facility and I've run out of glass up here on the space station. So I'll need to bring up another shipment of glass. Um, and then we also have changed our astronomic science pack to the one that uses beryllium, which we were already on that one because we had a thousand beryllium given to us up here, but... That will give us a lot more astronomic science over time. And then we are also using the blank observation frame recipe that uses one beryllium instead of one steel, and then we get 10 instead of five. So we save a lot on glass, coal, and oil here. So that will help. And then everything else, I believe, is still the same as it was before. So I wonder how much we have in terms of space science or astronomic science. We have quite a bit. We have a, a little over 100 stored up, so I wonder if I should do this recipe or this research again. I feel like this is still probably one of the best. These two are very expensive at 500 each, so can't even really afford those. I'll want to do this one soon. It is 5,000 rocket science, so I might have to do it in waves, but... The mining productivity researches are pretty huge in terms of the, you know, the entire playthrough. We're going to save millions of ore. I will maybe discover one more zone first, and then I will research so we save another four rocket parts per launch. And then I'll have to bring some glass up, so let's go look at our home planet. And we've got a lot of glass already loaded in. I will add some extra requests here for more glass. Just because I know I'm going to be using quite a bit, we'll add another thousand. And let that get delivered. Let's see what we just discovered. We discovered a new planet called Fairy. It's quite large, 7,500 radius, 12 minute days, a low amount of robot interference and threat. Oh, hold on. Is this the amount of fuel I need right here? That I just haven't been... No, Delta V from Navi Orbit, 3700. Yeah, that's not a great explanation on... I mean, I know what Delta V is in terms of Kerbal Space Program, but how does that relate to the amount of fuel you need in a cargo rocket? I have no idea. Um, I wish they just told you the amount of fuel you needed from a certain place. But anyway, so we've got a new planet with lots of crude oil, and that's about it. So I don't know if I'll have any reason to go there. Unless I need, I don't know, some more barrel. But, and then we got our rocket reusability 6 finished. Let's go ahead and launch up the plant, uh, not the planet. We cannot launch a planet. Our cargo rocket which I will need to change this guy to green, I believe. And that will do it. And the sound keeps playing, even though I'm not looking at it anymore. And I think... No, I do have water ice. That's good. I thought I might have forgotten water ice for a second. So we'll just grab some glass from that guy. And put that in here. There we go. Biochemical facility. It's quite large, which is annoying. Um, it's the same size as the manufacturing, actually. So that means to get water, we're going to have to use this big fatty. 
So I think I'll put it actually down here, kind of out of the way of stuff. And we want to make water out of water ice, which is right here. And what's nice is all we have to do is request. There's no barrels to get rid of. And then we can just pipe the water where we need it to go. Which in this case is right here. And delete that. And delete these. Let's see. Yeah. And lubricant is interesting because I now have a new way to make lubricant, which I believe I want to switch to. Which uses cryonite slush instead of heavy oil. Still uses a tiny bit of heavy oil. But then we're just using one sulfuric acid and one cryonite rod instead of 10 heavy oil. I'm not sure if I want to do it this way. I, hmm. Because then I end up using quite a few cryonite rods. Let's just look at my... Let's see, fluids, lubricant. In the last 10 hours, I've used 400,000 lubricant, which would be 40,000 cryonite rods over 10 hours. Is that worth it? Or would I rather just use the oil? I still have plenty of oil on Navi, so maybe for now we'll keep the lubricant recipe the same. I think I have enough in the logistics network. No, I only have 24, so maybe not. Though, we do get a lot of cosmic water. I don't know, we'll leave it for now. But we've almost got our thermofluid completely filled up. I believe we have our... Yeah, our cold thermofluid is completely backed up. And then... It will slowly, over time, fill up these other lines. Which is a little unfortunate. But this guy has stopped putting lubricant in because we have enough. That's right. Okay. So... Over time, this will fill up, but it will have a limit, and hopefully we can get there so we stop wasting resources. Here's our junk data formatting. I don't think we get a better version of that for a while. Yeah, the 80% requires level 2 supercomputers, which require energy science pack 3s. So we're a long way from that, but what I want to do is take a look at the energy science itself which is right here. And I've kind of clicked on all the things I need to click on to get it ready for input. Altogether, it's not absolutely crazy expensive. If I change this to a one, then we can see the price of one energy science pack. And we've got a decent amount of holmium plates, some electronic circuits, decent amount of copper plates, 3.5 blank data cards, Almost one multispectral mirror. 1.5 uranium-235 is actually one of the more expensive pieces. And then about 80 petroleum. Which, where does that go? That goes, yeah, we need a lot of chemical gel. That's right. And then some stone, which we will have to bring up as well. I don't think I have any stone or any uranium. But I believe I have everything else. So, to accommodate those things... I probably should have done this before I launched the cargo rocket. Now I'm going to have to launch another one. I don't think I have stone. I'll probably want enough for like... I mean, 500... I don't know. That might be too many. Then I would need a lot more copper. Well, we will change our copper request... to 6,000. I didn't need any of those things. We'll change our Holmium plate request to 4,000. Change our green circuit. How many did I need? Six each? Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, we'll change this to 3,000. OK. 
Okay. And then we need uranium-235. But just a little bit. Although, 235 is expensive. In terms of time. We'll change that to 500. And we need some stone. Which we'll do 800. I guess I should do equal amounts of those two things. And then we need some more petroleum. Which we need a lot of... Gosh, that's so much petroleum. Is there no other way to do this? I don't think there is. Petroleum gas can... only come from oil. I guess it can come from coal. But that's that stacks to even less. Now, if I get methane gas going at some point, that might be an easier way to make a bunch of petroleum in space, but for now we're just going to have to bring up barrels, lots and lots of barrels of petroleum. So, just for one science pack, we need 80 petroleum. Which means 1.6 barrels. Wow. Yeah, well, here we go. I'll just request a bunch more. I've already got 200. But now we need, like, 600. And even then, that's only going to be enough for 400 science. Yeah, I mean, we need a huge number. So let's just bump up the number here. Let's change it to 800. I guess that'll work. And I put some machine learning data in the trunk of this space capsule because we are going to use that to make module some more module fours. Though maybe I should just be bringing the stuff up here to make module fours because can't use productivity anyway. But let's take a look at how the satisfaction is going here. So we haven't provided our uranium-235 at all which is a bit unfortunate. So it's right here. I don't want to make this chest a provider chest because this is the one that needs to feed back in. I am going to let this build up more though, and we may need more than one of these processing. But for now, I will have an inserter place into a provider chest and we'll get that wired up so that it only does that maybe if I have fuel cells. So if uranium fuel cell is greater than 50, which it is. I also just realized we need to upgrade that to a requester because I've run out of iron and gotten somewhat close to running out, running out of fuel cells, though that's lasted me, you know, the last 10 or 20 hours of the game. Just the initial amount of iron I put in this chest. So definitely not running out anytime soon, but... I should probably up this request to just fill up the whole chest with empty fuel cells. And then this needs to be iron plates. Okay, so we've at least got some uranium, at least enough to jumpstart the production. And it looks like we're still getting lots of things delivered. Potentially those are just things that we're using, it looks like. because we've still got lots of space science running up here. Yeah, we're using lots of light oil for the frames. All this stuff is running on full cylinders. All my little astrometrics facilities. 
We've got plenty of those. Yeah, all of these are running and making catalogs. We're making insight. Slowly making the uh, significant data out of insight. And therefore slowly making astro astronomic science. Got 48 in that one and 44 in this one. So another 100 or so. And because I have how much productivity? Plus 60%. That means I could do another reusability research. Which, honestly, I mean, there's no point in doing these two. Except pushing towards Astronomic Catalog 2. Which does help me make Insight more cheaply. But it requires all these new microwave and infrared things. Which those consume multispectral mirrors and the other one consumes nothing. Oh, well, that's maybe something we can do. But for now, we'll just do the reusability. Because that will be very beneficial in continuing to make rocket launches cheaper. So I feel less bad about sending a launch up without very many ingredients. Okay, so this one has delivered most of what it's requested. 300 of the 500 slots used. Let's just go ahead and launch it. I think I launched it. Yeah. Oh, I need to turn off this constant combinator. Well, we'll have plenty of glass for next time. Okay, there we go. So... I maybe should have thought of this. I'm going to need a lot more scaffolding. So we might have wasted just another cargo rocket launch because I'm going to need the space to build a whole nother science production area, which I think I'll do over here. I want to keep this vertical area for more thermofluid. Although eventually I might just need a whole new thermofluid setup because you can only get 800 ish fluid per second in a pipes in a pipe area that big so I mean at this point we're already doing 150 per second so we can still double or triple this for sure I mean that's 300 per second so maybe only double that because the more pipes you have in the same network the the more it limits the flow rate but it does take a lot of pipes before you start get limiting start being limited to less than like 800 ish so we should have enough for that but I think I'll just use this whole area down here for energy science. I'll just kind of make a new offshoot in this area. And I'll leave that space to the left to expand astronomic science. So we'll try to make slightly separate blocks. Someday I may want to refactor everything because, you know, I'm realizing that like these blank data cards get used everywhere. Literally everywhere. And so for all the sciences, all the levels of science. Um, so I, maybe those should be on a on a belt, you know, things like that. But for now, we'll just we'll call this a day. And I don't know why I'm getting so excited to build, because I need all of these things first. I already have chemical gel and cosmic water. Question is, do I want to barrel it? Do I want to just send pipes down here? Or do I want to make it separately? These are good questions. Also, I got scared for a second. This was the wrong number. I'm not making one per second. I'm making two per minute. Much smaller build. I actually can maybe handle more than that. That's 
It's only like one of each building. So we'll maybe go for four per minute. How's that looking? That's not too bad, but I think I can still go more. We'll just go 0 0.1. 0 0.1 per second. Oh, right. So this is eight per minute because all the original amounts were before I added beryllium. So beryllium, putting that into the mix, essentially quadrupled my output. So eight per minute is actually all the same buildings I already had. So that's what we want to do is eight per minute, eight per 60. So we'll match the two. Okay, so I want to pin that. And I need to build all these buildings, which I guess is part of the issue. Should I have all these in a mall? I'm not really sure, but I am going to need a lot of, a lot of various buildings. So we need two more space manufactories, which thankfully we have. We do have those automated. We need nine supercomputers and nine electromagnetics facilities. So I guess we'll just use a requester chest. We'll let the bots do the work. So we need nine of these. We are definitely going to run out of resources. Looks like I'm out of accumulators already. Thankfully, we have enough. Okay, so I ended up with nine of those. And then we need three laser facilities. Also needs accumulators. Those need accumulators. This is an interesting one. Plasma generator. I need three of those, and those require furnaces. But I think I can maybe make this one work. Can I make the furnaces? I need 12 electric furnaces. Yeah, okay, we have just enough to handcraft that. So, I think what I'm going to do uh, to spare you the nitty gritty details here is I'm going to pause the episode here. I'm going to go ahead and get all of the things crafted for these various buildings that we need and then grab a bunch more resources like belts, pipes, you know, a few more bots for our space station here just to make sure that we're actually ready to do this build. I may even place down some more solar so that we have enough power to run everything. That way we can uh, keep this episode a little more entertaining so you don't watch handcrafting the musical uh, while I sit here. So I'm going to pause the episode here and I'll be back. So I have crafted all the buildings we need for our energy science research chain. So we're going to start working on that. Let's go ahead and get it pinned. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do about the cosmic water and chemical gel. So I'll start um, in the steps after that. So we need three plasma facilities, which I'll just put over here. Space those out by one. And then we definitely need logistics down here. So we'll get that going and some power. Looking forward to getting those construction pylons with lots more power reach. So we have some sort of proton stream here, or I guess this is a plasma stream, right? Yeah, out of chemical gel. Altogether, only making 26 a second. And then with that and what are those copper plates, we make some, what are these called? Ion streams. 
pretty sure I had two of these. But I don't know where the second one went. Maybe I never made a second vertical accelerator. I thought I had. Oh, that's right. I decided I would just put another speed module in it, so I didn't need three. So we'll put this one off to the side, like so. And we'll just put in one more speed module. And that should do it. Check that off the list. And we don't need the ion stream except for these electromagnetic field datas. And what I'd like to do is run all of the data cards past these buildings with a belt. Because they all need blank data cards. And I'm going to need more space, it looks like. I'm going to move this up just a little bit here. So the radiation facilities... Let's say this is going to be my my belt. Oh, I need my space belt. Okay, so let's say this is my belt of blank data cards. Then we're going to need four of these making... Oh, interesting. I can process uranium up here in space. Huh. I can even do the Covarex process up here in space. And none of these can do the actual... Oh, you know what's funny? I don't think I've done the research. Yes. <laughs> we actually need to do the research for Energy Science 1. But we'll have these 10, or these 4, working on the radiation data. And then... I think I'll just put those in chests. Though maybe I should put them on a belt, I'm not sure. And then we have laser facilities, which we need. We'll give it some space. We need three of, and these are connected to the thermofluid network, as well as the rest of these are all thermofluid piped in together. Did I beacon? I didn't beacon any of these. Oh, that's silly of me. Well, in that case, we really only need two of those. Okay. And some efficiency, and then we only need... Yeah, I can get down to one laser facility. Though, I may just keep it at two laser facilities. Save a lot of power that way. We can bring this down to two. And bring this one down to two as well. That helps a lot. Okay. I must have just spaced out on doing that. Okay, so we only need two of these. And then we need two laser facilities, which we'll put here. Leave a space, because the fluid network gets messed up if you have those connected. And then, let's see, what else? I guess we need the, what are these called, electromagnetics facilities, which use the ion stream, so we'll connect it, we'll leave some space here, connect it like this. And then we need the electromagnetics facilities, which will line up with the other ones for thermofluid purposes. Connect up those pipes. Connect up these guys. Everything needs thermofluid. Except for the radiation ones. Connect systems with different fluids. Oh no. Are you serious? Oh, I did not notice that. These actually produce cool thermofluid. Which, uh, okay. I mean, that's fine. It just means I need to connect that up to a completely different network. I guess. That's so interesting. Okay, so since these use cool thermofluid, we're not even... Well, yeah, I don't really know what to think about that. We'll deal with that in a minute. 
We'll deal with our pipe spaghetti when we get there, when we're good and ready. Okay, so that's all hooked up. Chemical gel's all hooked up. And then I do want to hook up the output here of this thermal fluid to these. So maybe something like this. There we go. Okay. So those are all connected. And then the, this is cold, is it cold thermal fluid? Oh, we also, shoot. We also need cool thermal fluid into these. So I'm going to make use. I don't use them very often, but I'm going to use the elbow pipes. And you can't stop me. Nope, just kidding. Can't build them on space platform scaffolds. So we are not going to use the elbow pipes. Which means we need yet another space. And then I'll connect this up with the hot fluid. And this is the cold fluid, which we need to input. And that's the same cold fluid. Do these need fluid? I don't think they do. It's the same cold fluid that is going into all these, right? Yeah, one or two little temperature hickeys so we should just be able to hook that up okay so i think we've at least connected all the fluid network this putting out the the cool fluid is gonna mess me up a little bit i'll have to make sure that the radiators see the cool fluid is completely full so i'll need some sort of check that won't i don't even know how i'll do this I guess I could also barrel everything and use uh, circuits on those barrels, the unbarreling and barreling facilities. That could be another way to do this. But okay, so we also want to use what are these called modules in our computers. So we really only need three of those, two of those guys, and one supercomputer making significant data which there's really no reason to speed up and so then I, I wish maybe I had left space I could just put them right here kind of like those six um, let's do the same thing here I guess so three two and one. I'm not going to leave space like I did for Astronomic. At this point, I don't really know what the future is going to look like, so I guess I could just copy this. Okay, and at this point, I can just hook this up here. Can that go across? It can't. It needs to do this. I can hook that up like so. Okay, so those are all hooked up. Don't need that one. This needs to be significant data of the purple variety energy simulation. And then we should be able to combine energy and astronomic insight to get six instead of four significant data for still the total cost of 36 insight i'm guessing that's a good route to take but we'll actually need to figure out how to circuit all of that so i don't have any stalls in the system and then finally we need one one big boy making and he uses fluid as well so let's put him over here Making energy science. Which I assumed would have shown up. But we actually have to research the catalog and the science separately. Okay, that's fine. So based on this, fold in, warm out. So I should just be able to connect these. 
So that should all work. And now I just need chemical gel and cosmic water, which I think I'm just going to barrel. And we will unbarrel chemical gel there. And I guess I don't even need cosmic water because that's only for the chemical gel in the first place. So we will empty chemical gel barrel. I have an unbarreling. I should maybe have two of the... Uh, what are these called? Blueprints. Blueprint books. So that I can find what I need more easily. Chemical gel. There it is. Request. I think 30 is enough. I don't think I need very many per second. Get all those buildings powered. And then we'll just have to request the stone. And then we need to bring in the cold thermo fluid. Which cool is the one that this outputs. Okay, so cold, I can just hook everything up, I believe, without any repercussions. Like that. So cold thermo fluid, I think, is distributed to every building that needs it. Got energy science pack researched, so there it is. Beautiful. We'll use bots for all that stuff. So we'll get some more logistics coverage here. And then we want to barrel chemical gel, which I can do up here. This looks like as good a place as any. Quest, provide. We'll just do one, two stacks for now. Uh, we need the recipe, fill chemical gel barrel. That's the empty one. Fill. Okay, that should do it. So we'll barrel up the chemical gel. We need to request stone for these guys. Which I'll put on a simple belt. Something like this, quest, stone, or why not 400? We'll just have plenty. So that'll get us going with plasma stream. And then that plasma stream needs to be combined with chemical, chemical plates, copper plates in this building, which we'll just request 100. Need some more power over here. And then that creates the ion stream, which is... We're dealing with that on pipes. So these guys need blank data cards and uranium-235. We need multispectral mirrors. And then we need copper, holmium, and electronic circuits. Since there's only two of each of these buildings, I'm actually considering... Maybe we just use bots. I know I said I was going to use a belt, but at this point, they all need different resources anyway. So I don't think I'm going to use a belt. We'll do six for each. We'll do that. We'll do this. And then we'll do this. Inserting straight across. One, two... Oh. What? Oh, I copied the request. That's not good. We don't want to request 235 in each of them. Hold on. That can't be right. Oh, these make a lot more at once. So I don't... I just want maybe one request of that. Yeah, we've mucked this up quite nicely. Okay, we'll take the uranium out of all these and put it in the one that actually uses uranium. That'll be enough for a while. And then we want... This one's a little interesting. 
I'm going to put the uranium into an active provider. And then these will go into the passive provider, which will go up to one stack. In this case, we'll do polarization data. It's the best way to do this. Maybe I just put everything on a belt. Polarization data goes to the right. Everything here goes into active. Everything here goes into passive. We do one stack. That should work. Uh, and for this one, we need the filters. So this is for two, three, five. This is for radiation data. Hey, look, it's going. This one needs power. Looks like those are running, so we'll get polarization data and we'll get rid of the junk data cards and scrap. These are running, we need to do the same thing. We can do a filter. This is in the way. I guess we could just connect it like that. And then we need an active chest and a passive chest to the right. And we want, which kind of one is this? Electromagnetic field? Yeah. That goes into the passive. Everything else goes into the active chest, which is just the junk data cards. Need to make sure that's limited to a stack. That's limited to a stack. And then finally, what is this? Conductivity data. Output to the right. Conductivity data. We'll just keep doing the same story. This one needs to have a one stack limit. That needs to go in there. And we get robots down here. Okay, so I think we're making all the data types that we actually need, which is cool. And now we need a request. All four types. I don't love that there's three of these buildings. Guess we'll just do something like this. We'll, we'll do one request and two requests. So that's balanced. And those just make catalogs, so thankfully I can... I'm going to put those on a belt, and then this will only have one stack. And then we need to request catalogs. Actively provide blank data cards. Data card. So something like that. And then we need to request the things we want. Just 10 catalogs, I guess. And then this needs insight. Which is actually going to be right here. So I'm... Hmm. We're just going to take directly from that and we'll go around with the, what is this, thermal fluid? Do something like this, nope, that's the opposite of what I wanted, that, there we go, thermal fluid's connected up, we will then place the stuff, we will filter it. Yet again, active and passive. This is going to be significant data. And that, I think, is everything we need to do. Now we just need to connect up my thermal fluid outputs. 
and we need to quest and then we will filter junk data cards do the junk and then this is for the actual science which we are going to get soon and we'll request some of everything in there I don't know if I need that much yeah 25 that's maybe too much we'll just do 10 of everything okay so what where am I stalled here it looks like our I think our warm thermal fluid uh, let's see that's not connected to anything Okay, so warm thermal fluid, I think, is connected back to everything. No, I didn't actually connect it up. So this needs to then come over to here. Like so. And now we've connected that up all the way back to the beginning. But then the problem is this cool thermal fluid. So, full thermal fluid. We could put a hypercooler right here and actually dump the hot stuff back into that system and then use the cool stuff first. So, I might just do that. I don't think I have any more hypercoolers, but we can go make one. Jetpack over to our building constructor which is not the most elegant solution, but it works. Hypercooler. We need how many storage tanks? One. One storage tank. There we go. And then we will place this hypercooler right here. So we'll make that. Maybe I should rotate this. Actually, I want to rotate it like this. Just messed up everything. That's fine. I want to do that. And then this will attach here. And then we want to use this cold thermal fluid first. So this needs to be a top-up valve. Where did those go? Top-up. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. Can I not place these in space? No, I can't. Okay, good. So top up, we want to only top up this region. So that's where the cold thermal fluid enters this whole system. And we'll just be topping that up. And we'll first be using this thermal fluid, which I maybe have made this difficult to hook up. What with everything here? Hmm. I guess we will do this in the most convoluted way possible. Rather than rotating it and trying to figure out a better solution, we will do this. Ha! <laughs> and now all this stuff is in the way. Let's see. Is there any way to do this? I guess I could move that and connect this up here. And then we just need a substation. There we go. Extremely convoluted, but it works. So what's... Oh, I never put the belt there. That fixes that. Hold up. These guys have run out of blank data cards. Because that's not in the request. Let's try again. Although I guess I've run out of blank data cards altogether. I've run out of ion stream. Wait, how? Oh, that's not long enough. There we go. Okay, so my blank data cards are suffering. I'm guessing I've run out of copper. 
No, advanced circuits this time. Interesting. Okay. Well, I will give it all of the advanced circuits I have, at least for now. And let's up our advanced circuit request to... We'll call it 2,000. They stack to 200 anyway, so... That doesn't take up a whole lot of storage space. And I'm just going to go ahead and send another rocket up. I'm sure we need the resources. Once these bots deliver what they're trying to deliver... Yeah, we've got quite a few things that we need up in space. So we'll wait for the rest of those red circuits to get delivered. And then we'll send up the rocket. But everything seems to be running here. We've even got our catalogs going. Our astronomic energy insight going. Sorry, not astronomic, just energy. And then we even have some significant data running. So there we go. Soon we will produce our first energy science. Okay, let's launch the rocket. Looks like the bots finally figured out how to get charged up. And we will need a green signal here. There we go. That should do it, and I'll leave there before... Well, never mind. I thought I could avoid the sound. You can see we're using almost all of the power we have available, so I will need to add some more solar. I didn't actually do that when I paused. But hey, look, here it is. Energy science packs. Used by Space Science Labs for research. We did it. Energy science, check it off the list. Now, what can we actually research with energy science is a good question. So we can get an energy shield, not to worry about that. We can get our more efficient, significant data, which is something I'll do probably soon, because that only takes 10 of each. I can also get my Holmium cables. And then these other researches are expensive. Worker robot speed is 300 more. Energy science hypercooling requires 200. That lets me use cryonite slush. I don't think that's worth it, but I can look into that on Helmod. I can do super fast cooling, but what I'm more interested in is the one I already unlocked, which is the slow cooling. And then this one's pretty big. It makes my processing units half price, essentially by using Holmium cables, which are just one plastic and one plate to make two cables. So that will help me turn Holmium into lots of copper and stone, and the plastic is equal either way. So that will save a lot of resources, and then I can work towards these flat solar panels, which are twice the power of the other ones I have. So that's great. I'll actually do this research first, and then we'll do... Oh, add-on power pole and pylon. Okay, so with 100 of these, I can get the 64 electrical energy pylons. Nice. That's going to be great. And then what was the other research I wanted to do? I already lost it. We got to go back. Uh, this one, yeah. More efficient, significant data creation. I should probably also dump some more logistic spots. Well, we have 740. That seems to be enough. Place some more roboports so they always have places to charge. And we need to request. That's what's happening. So we're not actually requesting the science packs. So we'll put that in here. 50 each should be plenty. And then we'll slowly begin researching these energy science things. So I think next I might want to automate prod four modules. I'm not sure if I'm going to automate that yet. Um, I'm going to need iridium. 
plates. And then at some point we will need material science. And then we will need biological science. And apparently we don't have to do one tier of everything first. Uh, for example, we can go to energy science 2 here. We just have to do some other datas, which we can do all of these data things, I believe. And then we'll have energy science pack 2s. And then that can unlock these holmium solenoids, which then, with enough energy science pack 2s, we can research wide area beacons. So I may go straight for these now that I've unlocked, I believe, everything I need to build these. Um, let's see, so these require material testing packs, proton streams, and holmium cables, which we already have some of those things. Proton stream is just iron in plasma stream, that's easy. Particle stream is material testing packs, and I think material testing packs are pretty easy. They're just some basic materials. Yeah, iron, copper, plastic, stone. So just a little bit of everything in terms of the normal resources, and we can make those. So I think maybe before all this is going to be energy science too. And we will move that to the top. Um, in between episodes, I might just look a little bit more into the actual science chain and see what that looks like and investigate a little bit more like can i build all the buildings i need for that what's the hell mod chain gonna look like is it gonna be worse or does energy science 2 actually make this all of this more efficient maybe it makes an easier way to make insight more complicated but a better return on investment i'm not actually sure so we'll find out together um well i'll look into that a little bit and then i'll let you know what the results are in the next episode. So I think I'm going to call this an episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you all next time.